today I will be reading A Color of His Own by Leo Leone. A Color of His Own. The sad chameleon has a problem. Unlike all the other animals, he has no color of his own. Changing wherever he goes, he turns red with autumn leaves and black in the long dark winter, but in the spring, in the green grass, he finds a delightful solution. A color of his own. Parrots are green, goldfish are red, elephants are gray, pigs are pink. All animals have a color of their own, except for chameleons. They change color wherever they go. On lemons, they are yellow. In the heather, they are purple. And on the tiger, they are striped like tigers. One day, a chameleon who was sitting on a tiger's tail said to himself, If I remain on a leaf, I shall be green forever, and so I too will have a color of my own. With this thought, he cheerfully climbed onto the greenest leaf, but in autumn, the leaf turned yellow, and so did the chameleon. Later, the leaf turned red, and the chameleon too turned red. And then the winter winds blew the leaf from the branch, and with it, the chameleon. The chameleon was black in the long winter night, but when spring came, he walked out into the green grass, and there he met another chameleon. He told his sad story. Won't we ever have a color of our own, he asked. I'm afraid not, said the other chameleon, who was older and wiser. But, he added, why don't we stay together? We will still change color wherever we go, but you and I will always be alike. And so they remained side by side. They were green together and purple and yellow and red with white polka dots. And they lived happily ever after. the end. That was A Color of His Own by Leo Leone. Okay, everybody. So we just listened to A Color of His Own and we are going to make, let's see, can you guess what we're going to make? What do you think? If you said chameleons, you would be correct. So the first thing you're going to do is open up your sketchbook to a clean sheet of paper or get a white sheet of paper. And instead of having your book like this with the spiral on the side or the fold on the side, whatever you want to call it, we are actually going to turn our paper like this. If yours has a spiral or something like that, you want it to be at the top because if you have it down like this and you're trying to draw, man, that's going to be super uncomfortable on my arm and on my wrist. Ugh, I don't want that. So you are going to make sure that the spiral is at the top or whatever you have that's kind of like a spiral. It's gonna be up at the top. Wherever your paper flips, that's gonna be at the top. Okay, so now we are going to draw our chameleon. And drawing a chameleon can be actually pretty easy. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a big potato. That's the shape we're gonna make, it's a big old potato. So put your hand in the middle of your paper and you're gonna draw your potato around him. Around him, around your hand. Draw my big old potato. Just like that. Now, to draw the head of the chameleon, we're gonna do a simple shape. We're going to make a triangle. So we're gonna start at the, kind of at the bottom of our potato, go all the way up, go past the body, see how I crossed it? Up, 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 go almost to the top of the paper. And then we're going to go over almost, almost to the side over here. That, and when I'm almost gonna touch there, I'm gonna come back down and close my triangle like that. 
Now you see this, we can't see through a chameleon's head, so we're gonna erase that curved line right there. Now we're gonna add our chameleon's eye. So we'll draw a circle and then draw another circle. And when we go to trace this, we're gonna color in that eye. We're going to add a line for his mouth, just like that, straight line from the tip of the triangle. Then we are going to give him a tail. Now I didn't give myself a lot of room over here, so it's gonna be a pretty tight tail, but that's okay. So we're gonna start on the back side of our chameleon and we are going to make a swirl. So watch first. Swirl, just like that. Now to finish the tail, cause that's, that's not good, it's just one line. We wanna make sure it looks like it's thick, like it's an actual tail. So to do that, after you do your swirl, you're gonna make a little curved line at the end of your swirl, a little curved line. It just looks like I'm continuing the swirl. And then I'm gonna follow that swirl back to his body. Now you wanna make sure you leave enough room, so you wanna make it kinda of thick. Don't make it super duper skinny because it's gonna be hard to color if it's super duper skinny. You are going to erase this line right here. So it looks like his tail is connected to his body. And then we're going to give him some legs. So to give him legs, we're gonna do super easy legs. You are going to draw two lines and you wanna make sure they are at least a finger. For me, it's a finger. For you guys, it's probably two fingers because remember, I have big adult hands. So for me, it's a finger. You guys, two fingers. And we are going to draw a straight-ish line. You're gonna do two of those. Like that. And then to give them toes, we're just gonna do three little toes. So one, two, three, just a bump. Bump, bump, bump. Almost like we're drawing a flower. Now we're gonna do this shape again, except this time we're only gonna draw one line instead of two. So right next to our leg, we're gonna draw one line and draw, instead of seeing three toes, am I gonna see three toes? No, I wouldn't see three toes because his leg's in the way. So I'm only going to draw one toe. Same over here, I'm gonna draw one line how many toes am I gonna see? That's right, only one toe. Just like that. And there we have a very beautiful chameleon. So the next thing you need to do is you need to pick out different types of lines to put on your chameleon, because we're going to make him a rainbow chameleon. So we need to split up the spaces and the colors. I'm gonna leave this triangle, part of the triangle here. If you want to erase it and do a different line, you can, but I'm gonna just leave mine. And your lines do not have to match my lines. You can do any kind of lines you want, but if you get stuck and can't think of any, then you can follow mine. You wanna make sure that you give at least two finger spaces between your lines. How many finger spaces between my lines? That's right, two finger spaces. So I'm gonna put two fingers down and then do a wavy line from the top of the body all the way down. Two finger spaces. Two finger spaces. Squared line. Two finger spaces. I'm gonna think of a different type of line. We're gonna do this really unique, it's kind of like a bunny ear line, or it also kind of looks like top part of a heart. And then for his tail, you can leave it like it is, or I'm gonna add little stripes to his tail. Now we're also gonna do the background at the same time. So since he is a chameleon, chameleons like to be out in nature. And what's out in nature? If you said leaves, then you'd be correct. So we're gonna draw some leaves for our background. So we're gonna start in the corner and we're going to do a curved line. It's kind of like a rainbow line. 
another rainbow line back to where we started. And we're gonna just continue doing that curved line, another curved line back to where we started. Curved line, another curved line. So a sad line, and then a, yeah, no, just think of it more as rainbow lines. They kind of look like sad faces and happy faces, depending on how you look at them. And if your leaves turn out a little rounded and not pointy like mine, that's okay. Leaves all look different. There are so many different types of leaves. So you can have some big leaves, you can have some small leaves. Go for it. Remember, everybody's drawing is going to be different, and that's what makes art awesome is that everybody can be different and everybody's still right i mean unless you drew like a horse then then it would definitely be wrong because we're drawing a chameleon but if, if you're just talking about leaves like you can't be wrong okay so what is the next step i have it all drawn what do i do next if you said trace it you would be correct we are tracing these with a Sharpie. These are what the Sharpies look like for you. You wanna use your fat Sharpie. You can tell the difference between a fat and a skinny Sharpie. Of course, I don't have a skinny Sharpie with me, but you can tell the difference because a fat Sharpie has all gray on the handle and a black cap. A skinny Sharpie has a black cap, gray body, with a little bit of black on the end. So if you see that little bit of black on the end, that means I'm skinny, don't use me. I'm only for little tiny details. So we want black cap, gray full body. And we're gonna use Sharpie. I'm gonna be very careful with this because this is permanent. So it doesn't come off of anything. So you need to be very careful. If you have something to protect your table at this point, I would put it down. I have my placemat that I'm gonna use. If you have like a mat, you can put it down. My Sharpie looks a little different because I use a super duper fat Sharpie. One that's like extra fat. And you are going to trace over your drawing. When you are tracing, remember you can color in the eye. Okay, now that we are all done tracing, we are going to use a big fat eraser to erase away any pencil lines that you still see because if you look closely, you can see like where I missed some little spots. So I'm going to erase all of those. All right, now that I've done that, it is time for What's the next step? You guys tell me. If you said color, you would be correct. So I'm going to use my markers and I'm going to start coloring. You can use any markers you have. And we want to go with a rainbow on his body. So what color should I start with? If I'm doing a rainbow, what color should I start with? If you said red, you would be correct. Remember to add bumpers when you are coloring. We need neat, nice, neat coloring. So I'm going to go slow and give myself nice, thick bumpers. This keeps my crayon, my crayon, my marker inside of the shape that I'm coloring in. This is the slow part. And remember to go in the same direction. I'm going up and down, that's the whole time. Other than the bumpers, you're going in the same direction the whole time. And I'm going to put bumpers around his eye too, so that I don't get any red marker inside of his eye. I don't want red inside of his eyes. We wanna keep that white. All right, I did red, so what is my next color of my rainbow? We did red. If you said orange, you would be correct.
Okay, so now that you have your rainbow all complete, you can do whatever colors you want for his feet and for his tail. So if you want to do the tail all one color, say you want to continue, maybe you ended with purple, maybe you ended with a different color because you had more lines than me, so you could repeat your rainbow or anything like that. So if you want to, you can have it all be one color or you can do different colors. I think I'm going to continue my rainbow in his tail and then we'll see what I do for the feet, but I haven't decided that yet. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna do the leaves. So to do the leaves, you are going to use a green marker. I have a different shade of green I'm gonna use. I have this highlighter green, but you can use just a regular green marker, it doesn't really matter. I just have the option of doing a different color. So you are gonna do green for all the leaves, then you are going to pick a crayon, one color for the rest of the background. Can I do two colors? No, I cannot do two colors. Can I do four colors? Nope, not four colors. How many colors can I do? Correct, if you said one color, then that is right. And I'm going to do that, all of this space, with a crayon. Okay, so we're gonna add some details. Before I start my crayon, I want you to add some details. What you're going to do is you're going to get out your bat Sharpie, and we're gonna add some details to the leaves to make them look more like leaves. They look like leaves now because they're green, but leaves have like little veins in them and things. So we're gonna try adding some of those details. There are two ways you can do this. The first way is you take your Sharpie, start at the corner of the leaf or at the bottom of the leaf, and just draw a straight line like that. Looks pretty good, pretty simple, right? The second way is you start at the bottom of the leaf or the corner of the leaf and you do that, you start the same way by drawing that line and then, so you can see, draw that line. Then you're gonna draw diagonal lines on either side, but you wanna make sure they're going in different directions. So the ones on this side are gonna be going this way and the ones on this side of the leaf are gonna be going this way. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. And you don't have to worry about the matching up or anything like that, because no leaf is perfect, none of them are the same. So now you can do that for your leaves, or you can just do a simple line. I wanna see a mix of both of them. Okay, so now that I have done my leaves, my chameleon, all that, we are going to use a crayon to color in the rest of the white spaces. How many colors can I use again? If you said one, you would be correct. So I'm gonna pick a color and I'm gonna start coloring. <laughs> 